What's the future of the Fallout franchise? What about Fallout 5 and the return of the public test server on 76? It's news time! Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. I'm back with another batch of breaking news just for you, and yes, way beyond the Inside the Vault article, which hardly brought any news this past Thursday. I got some exciting things to share regarding the future of the franchise, as well as the next game, Fallout 5. I will also talk about the PTS and Season 4 which should go live in a few weeks, both of them. And as usual, I will go over some issues such as a returning exploit and the persistent player vending machine bug. Let's not forget about the live community events right now. Okay, so without any further delays, let's crack into it. The first news I have for you in this video is about the future of the Fallout franchise and a little bit about Fallout 5 too. I recently read this extensive article from Game Rant where the author Charlie Stewart goes over how the upcoming Fallout game might end up in a much better position than the previous two titles, Fallout 4 and 76. It's a known fact that 76 let a lot of people down ever since it got released back in 2018 and also along the way during the last couple of years. Things did improve with the Wastelanders and Steel Dawn DLCs, that's true, but there is still an endless list of issues to be solved and the lack of new content has been pulling players away from the wasteland. Now, we are still a long way from Fallout 5, it could be at least a decade away, Bethesda has been developing a new franchise called Starfield, as you probably know, which we barely know anything about. And recently, they also confirmed the development process for The Elder Scrolls 6 has begun. This means there's plenty of work to do for the next five years or even more. Now, you might be wondering, how is this great news for the Fallout franchise? Well, at first, it sounds like bad news, I know, but it's not necessarily like that. This could be perceived as a strength, as Game Rant pointed out. First, because this gives the opportunity for Bethesda to experiment with very little risk, with the new engines, with the new features, brand new systems, and everything that will be part of the foundation for their upcoming next-gen RPGs. They will also have plenty of time and the chances to try and consolidate new formats. There's also the factor reputation time, which might as well increase again if Bethesda meets or exceeds the fans' expectations with their upcoming titles. Of course, the other way around could also end up happening. If Bethesda releases more buggy and let down titles, that could be the end for them though. So I don't think that will happen anytime soon, and that's probably why they are taking their time developing the new RPGs. So one decade of waiting for Fallout 5 might end up being not such a bad thing. We will surely be much older, that's true, and tired of waiting, but the chances for a really great game to come out are much higher. With so many buggy releases lately, such as 76 and Cyberpunk 2077, I must agree with Charlie here that many players may be willing to wait longer if that means a longer development line more testing and overall more quality, but during the next years a lot could change. Let's not forget that Microsoft is still in the process of fully acquiring ZeniMax, the parent company for Bethesda. The transition process is still ongoing since last year. Plus, there is a chance that a third-party studio might step in to create a new Fallout game, just like it happened with New Vegas. There are even rumors that a New Vegas 2 might become a reality, so there's really a lot of potential events that could end up happening in the following years. One thing is for sure though, the future of the Fallout franchise is uncertain, but not in a bad way. As far as we know, Bethesda intends to keep making new and better content for 76, at least for the next couple of years. Moreover, a new Fallout game could end up happening sooner than we expect, so it's really not as bad as it initially looked like. After two long weeks of waiting, we finally got word from Bethesda last Thursday, but it didn't reveal a lot of news, to be fair with you. Bethesda has been delaying the reopening of the next public test server over and over again, 
And this time it was no different. Note that I'm not exactly complaining here, they had a good reason this time with the life-threatening storms hitting their studio in Austin, Texas. I think for around one or two weeks they hardly worked full gas, so I can only imagine there's a lot of work on queue and another delay was to be expected, no surprise there. So what I'm trying to say here is that I'm merely pointing out facts. If I'm not wrong, this was the fourth delay for this PTS alone and we now have middle of March as the new deadline. There's still no scheduled date, no exact day, which might indicate they're still not sure if they can finish the new content in time to meet his mid-March deadline. So anything could happen in the following weeks. Keep in mind that update 26 will include the highly anticipated special or perk loadouts, as well as camp slots to build more camps per character, and then a new daily ops mission featuring new enemy mutations, new mission locations, and new rewards too. So let's all hope for the best if everything goes according to plan, a new date will soon be announced, so stay tuned for more. Alright, next I have a matter that some of you have been asking me lately through social media. What about season 4? Season 3 is about to end in mid-March as well, but so far Bethesda hasn't really said anything on an exact date for anything. Not for when season 3 ends precisely or when will the next season start, but that should be solved in the following weeks. So far Bethesda hasn't delayed any season yet, which makes me confident they will not delay this one either. Plus, they are known for making announcements very close to the event date. It was like this in season 2 and season 3 as well. In fact, if you still remember, season 2 ended right in the same day as season 3 started, on December 15. So I think something similar is bound to happen once again. If my math is correct here, season 3 should end about March 15, which should be also the new date for season 4 to kick off. I think that would be a great strategy, I mean the sooner they add new content, the better. It gives players a reason to log in again, something more to do and so on. But with everything going on lately, anything could happen, so let's wait and see. Another hot topic lately is regarding the player vending machine bug. It's still around, it never really went away to start with. And recent reports refer to items used on checking themselves from vending machines or even display cases, which I can confirm. Some 8 items have disappeared from my med bay display case a few times now, but that's not the main issue here. The player vending machine bug is something far, far worse. For those not familiar with the issue, here it goes. The system basically pulls random stashed items or items you already added for seal and it adds a random price or no price at all to them. Like this example, the item is being sold with no displayed price. This obviously means other players can easily grab rare or expensive items at a really low price when this bug happens. It's kinda like getting robbed. I mean, imagine an item worth of 20k caps and then it's sold for two caps due to such bug. Just like it happened to this player. It's surely not pleasant. But in this case, it's nobody's fault but Bethesda's for not fixing this bug. It's in-game for at least a year now. I even went in-depth a while ago in another video with lots of player reports. The good thing here is the fact that this bug is quite rare. It doesn't happen so often. Therefore, why not a lot of people talk about it? But as I said before, it's around and I don't think it's going away anytime soon, sadly. Moving forward, do let me inform you that a previously fixed exploit has somehow returned to the wasteland. At least it's not a game-breaking or impactful one, so at least something. I've recently seen reports where players can access certain atomic shop items for free, without acquiring them of course. Wallpapers to be more precise here, and as usual I'm not going to show any proof or get into details because as good as this glitch can be, it's still light cheating and I'm not in favor of cheating in general. So I will keep the details behind me, but since this one involves in real life money and it surely affects their revenue, you should expect a fix to come soon. But as the normally stealthy fixes such glitches very very quickly, just to let you know. 
Next, I want to share something incredibly useful. It's about a new data mine cheat, which contains all the free cosmetics in game, as well as their ID, type, rarity, and even drop sources, which means you can now easily find your way to get any of the legit and free cosmetics in Fallout 76. All you have to do is open this file, which link you can find below the video if you want to check it for yourself. Or well, at least if you had no idea or where to get a certain outfit, now there is a place to check all of them yes all of them just look at that isn't that awesome i want to leave a huge shout out to the data mining community for bringing this one together i have already learned a few things so far there's also a section for cheated outfits you know there's a lot of hacked and spawn items in game the kind where you cannot obtain the legit way, only through cheats. So if you would like to check if a certain outfit is spawn or legit, you can do it here too. Anyway, as I said, the link is right below if you want to check it out. What else has been happening in Appalachia? Well, do let me introduce you to the high altitude camps. Mm -hmm. This came to my attention during my last live stream. It got me so intrigued that I decided to do my homework. After all, I was not familiar with this topic before, but it seems like there are certain spots in the sky which allows you to build stuff, no joke. Thanks to Chad for confirming one of these spots at the Toxic Valley. I saw one at the bog near the Prime Fisher, so there are two at least. It's like a small area at the very edge of the map, in terms of latitude of course, where the game just allows you to build, so in theory it's not exactly cheating. I mean, you still need to use glitches to get that high in the map, either with a survival tent exploit or with stamina glitches, but once you do, the high altitude building is pretty legit if you can find the right spots. I guess it's some sort of misplaced rule or some heavy bug Bethesda is not fully aware because I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to be able to build camps close to space. But since you are, lots of players have been making their own sci-fi alien out of this world camps. Some even go as far as making practical jokes out of this by building a flying plane <laughs> with smoke and everything. I must say, very clever. Others choose the mysterious approach by going for alien bases. This one is my favorite one so far. It looks really cool and enigmatic. It even has lights pretty impressive. There's also domes and stairways to heaven, sort of camp, which are very different than the usual creations you see on land. There are also normal ones, of course, but I think the other types are much more pleasant to look at. So yeah, I think it's time to start paying attention to the skies, everyone. Who knows what we might find next? Well, this weekend's community event is the Caps of Plenty, where you can enjoy double the daily Caps pool from vendor bots. That's right, you can redeem 2,800 Caps per day until March 8. So make the most out of it, since on a normal day, you can only sell items for up to 1,400 Caps per day. It's a decent event, it's a great deal, especially if you are low on Caps. It will save you a lot of time from farming Caps the normal way, at least. But, you know, I think this should be a permanent change, not just an occasional event, but that's just my humble opinion. Anyway, do enjoy the extra caps this weekend and let's move on. Okay, to finish off this one, we have a few more community events you probably shouldn't miss if you love to take screenshots and you enjoy virtual photography altogether. Bethesda is hosting more photo mode contests as per usual every month. We have the Settlers team for the Cam Creations content for March 2021. Last month, players had to work with the Raiders topic and it's time to work with the good guys now. As for the Around Appalachia photo contest, the team for March is Winter Silhouettes. So go out there, be creative and show what you can do. Anyway, this Contests are normally just for fun, but I've seen comments claiming there are free atom rewards sometimes. I couldn't find any precise prizes from their forum posts, but I do remember last month people were referring to a few thousands of atoms per winner when a cheater photo ended up into the winning results. I kinda don't like the lack of transparency or communication in this case, but hey, it is what it is, right? 
The random bug for this video comes straight from Twitter. Let's dance to the beat. These anglers were surely enjoying themselves. On the serious side though, what the heck is that bug? Flickering enemies? I had never seen such a thing before, but thanks to Smectastic, I now know it can happen. Thanks for sharing, by the way. Alright everyone, thank you so much for watching. I am Marta Branco and I can't wait to bring you even more news. I have quite a few on queue already for the next one. Well, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to let YouTube know you want more content like this. And as usual, a huge thanks to all my dear supporters. You guys rock. That's it. I will see you all very, very soon in the next one. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.